So there's more than one method of uh, moving a, a any object towards another object. Now we are going to use another method, but this is actually important as we need to also do some vector maths. And this is important as you may need to create solutions for your clients that uh, require you to set a direction or get the direction between an enemy object and a player or if you're firing a gun let's say from an enemy object or an enemy towards a player you may need to know what direction the and uh, the player is when you fire and it may also you may also need to use this if you wish to use the player to shoot at at an enemy if you're using some kind of an auto aim auto aim kind of a game so in order to get the direction, we will real right, we will get the direction from the enemy object to the player object, and this is the code for that. So the direction in vector maths is always calculated by you whatever the target is, minus where you want the target to be calculated from or to be taken from. So in our case, we need to basically, this is our target and this is the transform or this transform and the position. So the position of both of these will be subtracted. And this is how we are going to basically know the direction of, of basically the, uh, ba ba the direction in which we have to move. Now, in order to move towards this direction, we actually need to know uh, what this is. So this is direction, we have a direction, now we need to normalize this direction. So we will normalize this, which means that we will basically convert these values into ones. Right now, if I, if I write print over here and I write direction, and uh, direction plus direction, this is plus direction, as uh, this is how we write print statements. I'm not sure, I think I did not cover this. But if you ever need to write a print statement, Remember that you need to also write uh, like this, print direction plus direction. You need to write it like this, otherwise it won't work. So the the variable uh, that you want to print should not be in inverted commas, otherwise it's not going to, oh uh, sorry, not in quotation marks, otherwise it's not going to basically uh, work. So we're going to go over here, I'll click play and uh, you'll see that the direction is minus 10. So once we normalize this, this is going to result in this direction dot normalize. And now it's going to be in one. So it is going to be in a unit vector, which we require for proper direction. So I'm going to now go back to unity. So let me go back to unity. And uh, once we're here, you'll see that it's minus one. And if I go to the scene view and if I just um, move player character anywhere, you'll see that the direction is changing, the direction values are changing. Now for demonstration, I'm going to basically move the player character somewhere over here. So we will have like kind of a diagonal kind of a movement. So if I click play now, you'll see that the, this is the movement direction that we require. So you can see that this is the movement direction that we require. Now, uh, moving, move, how do we move? We basically simply add that vector. In vectors, you can add vectors basically. If I add this vector into transform.position, I'm going to move towards the vector that I am basically adding, as that's the direction, that's how 3D, 3D vectors work. You can see that th this is a 3D representation. You can see all of this, these arrows. So basically, this is giving us this direction. And if I add the position, uh, if I add the direction vector into the position, it's going to move this way. That That's how vectors work. And you may need to know this, as you may need to use this, uh, use this to move other things as well in your game if you ever work for clients. We will move the enemy object to a player. So this is the, actually the code for that. And you can see that it, uh, GitHub Copilot automatically understood what I'm trying to write. This is actually the code for that. So transform.position plus equals direction into uh, movement speed into time.delta time. It can also be uh, like this. Let me show it to you. Um, it can also be this transform.position plus. You can also write it like that. But uh, yeah, so. I believe you can write it like that. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Yeah, you can write it like that. Like uh, I was a little bit confused why this was grayed out, but basically this is a more efficient way of writing. Uh, so we are just adding this equation to transform dot position, which basically is the direction and the movement speed that we defined into time dot delta time. So what you'll see over here, hopefully, unless this equation is incorrect, because it can be, um, I sometimes do do not remember the correct equation. So I have to refer and you can see that it's still moving towards the player. So that's one way of moving towards the player as well. Uh, and we can actually uh, increase the speed a bit. So you'll see that basically we are here, but in the end, it's going to get stuck a bit. And there's a reason for that. And I'm going to tell you the reason. It's because this is not move towards. So it's basically going to kind of compute this every, you know, you can see that the values are being messed up. This is because of the, because of the reason that we really don't have any check. And in order to check how close we are to the player, what we'll do is we will calculate the magnitude as well. So we will get getting the magnitude between the enemy object and the player object. So basically, although it says vector two dot distance, we can also we can also write uh, dot magnitude. So if I uh, if I basically delete this like that. And if I write dot magnitude, this is also a way, uh, this is also a method of doing this. So it's, uh, oh yeah, I had to write actually minus here. So player transform dot position dot uh, minus transform dot position inside of brackets. These are, these are inside of brackets. And in the, in, 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 in the end, I wrote dot magnitude. So this is also going to give us the, give us the distance. So in order to see what distance we have, we're just going to write private float distance. And this is going to be distance to stop. And we are just going to replace this from to distance to stop. And uh, once we have that, this will tell the game at which distance the player should stop. We can also use this and move towards, but um, for demonstration, I'm just going to use it over here. So if the distance is less than distance stop, you will stop moving. So uh, no, this is not correct. Uh, we should actually write if distance to stop is less than less than uh, 1.5 f. Oops, I didn't have my number lock on. 1.5 f. We will return. So we will not run this code. If, if we ha already have a distance to stop at less than minus 1.5. So now the enemy will stop after it reaches a certain distance from the player. We will not move the enemy object if the distance is already covered. So this is one way of you, you know, stopping the enemy and making sure that they don't just, you know, just go into the player. We can also use this with move towards. So you can see that the distance is decreasing. And once it reaches 1.5, it's most likely going to stop. So let's see if this happens there. You can see that basically the enemy stopped. Now, the only problem is that if the, if the move, if like the, uh, value is a lot, then you'll see that we basically kind of didn't really stop at 1.5. This is a problem. So that's the reason why we usually, uh, in these kind of calculations, this happens as uh, we basically, well, we basically are, are uh, calculating this every frame. So the problem is that when we are calculating this every frame, this actually happens. So one way of doing this is basically to make sure that we basically stop at the distance of 1.5 from the player. And we can do that. It's, uh, I mean, then again, it's not, it's not exactly easy to do, but there is, there might be some easy or intermediate equations that you can use to stop the player at exactly 1.5. I never needed to do that, but, um, so this is a solution that you can use, but I've never actually used it. This is something that I'd like to show to you. So just for purpose of demonstration, I'm going to change this to 2.5. And if you, uh, you know that there was a cut in the video, I actually made a mistake. So I had to correct that. 
uh, while testing the code. So this is the code for basically getting uh, getting the uh, stopping the player exactly well close to 2.5 it's not going to be exactly 2.5 it's going to be close to that so stopping at exactly 2.5 units away from the player so first we were at 1.5 now we are 2.5 i'm doing this for demonstration it's going to be transform.position plus equal to direction into movement speed into time dot time into distance to stop minus 2.5 so this is an equation that you can use and uh yeah so that's what you can use so i'm just going to go to Unity and I'm going to click play and hopefully you'll see this happen in front of you. So if I just increase, oops, sorry, the movement speed was incorrect. Uh, okay, so <laughs> all right, so if I if I go over here, you can see that it stopped at exactly 2.5. And if I basically uh, do it a little bit faster or there, you'll see it stopped at 2.99. It's going to stop at 2.99. In fact, it's very close to 2.5. And if I go ahead and uh, change this back to 1.5, change the comment to 1.5, change this to 1.5. And if I go over here, I write 1.5. I'm going to simply save. And you're basically going to uh, get this like that. Okay, so here we go, and uh, you're just going to increase this, and hopefully we'll stop at close to 1.5, so there you go. Uh, and this is one way you can stop basically the player from the enemy from ex coming or really colliding into in, uh, like colliding with the player. So that's one way to do it. 